Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we've got a bit of a follow-up video to yesterday's video. Now, if you haven't checked out yesterday's video, I would suggest you do so, so you get a better grasp of what we're talking about in today's video. I'll fill you guys in as we go, but if you want to get the full context, go and check out yesterday's video in the comment section would be most appropriate. So, yesterday's video, we were talking about where or when did it all start to change or go wrong, depending upon your point of view with the state of the game, as is today in the year 2023. I was talking about how the game's gotten a lot more gimmicky mechanics, how it's leaning more and more toward the arcadey side of things, and I said, I think the introduction of British Battleships was when we started to see a change from just different characteristics and things to more gimmicky things when it comes to ship design. Now, in the comic section, quite a few of you guys noted one particular point when the game fundamentally started to shift. It was one that I thought was going to be brought up, but not quite to the extent that it was. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like 80% of the comments on yesterday's video. And that was the CV rework. So, I thought, well, let's step back and take a look at some of the bigger changes that happened before the CV rework, and then we'll talk about the CV rework itself, and then compare that to the state of the game today to try and answer the question, well, was it really that much better back in the day? Or are we kind of just viewing the whole thing through nostalgia goggles? So I went and I found a couple of major changes that happened uh, before the CV rework, and of course the CV rework itself. Let's talk about those now. So, one big thing that went on in ye old World of Warships that was a huge thing that they removed it was stealth firing. Now, some of you are probably going, Huh? But I can fire in smoke or behind cover right now and not get detected. Yes, you can now. Um, but before, you could do that in the open water right in front of your target, baby. Oh man, this was a very, very short portion of the game when I started to play. I think I literally played like the last maybe week or two of the patch that it was active in and then they removed it. For obvious reasons, and if you're still processing that, yes, you could literally sit in the open water, fire your guns if you had something like, I think most light cruisers and DDs could do it, and not even get detected by the target ship because you're detection bloom wouldn't go all the way out to your maximum detection like it d does today. So, if you think HE spamming was bad beforehand, imagine an invisible Zal doing it to you, and you can't even friggin' see the guy! <laughs> Like, now at least, if they want to HE farm you, uh, they gotta present themselves to you, or they have to have a, a destroyer buddy with smoke, or they gotta get in a good position behind an island to do it. But nope, just stand out in the open and just be burning you down, and there's not a thing you can do about it, unless you get someone, uh, a friendly DD, or maybe the CV to spot him. But man, yeah, I don't think there's very many players that argue that this was a bad change, other than the guys that like to do it. Um... Yeah, so in my opinion, that is straight up better in today's World of Warships than it was back in the day. Although, I, I will concede that this didn't really last for that long. Because the game came out in, what, 2015? This was gone in 2017. So again, like, within uh, the first third of the game's life, life so far, gone. Alright, so that's one thing that, again, if you think that, that that was a bad thing that it was removed, please let me know in the comments below why you think that was a terrible idea. I'm assuming you're one of those uh, farmers, though, that if you think that uh, this was a terrible idea that they removed it. But anyway, second major change was friendly fire getting removed. Now, I'd like to think most of you guys watching are probably from at least, you know, about two or year, two years ago. I know there's a fair few of you newer guys that have managed to find the channel, which is cool. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Um, but yeah, friendly fire getting removed was a huge thing because for a very, very long time... This was a core part of the game. You have to be careful. You have to be super careful with where you were firing at. Uh, especially if you had a, a DD. Like, man, Shimakazis. There are so many clips of Shimakazis just nuking 
their friendly battleships or cruisers because so many so many DD players back in the day used to launch torps from behind your enemy, uh, your friendly ships. And I mean that was in a lot of videos back in the day that was like the number one tip for DDs is do not launch torps behind your friends because once Mr. Torpedo leaves the torpedo tube, he's nobody's friend at that point, which added a, a, a bit a, a bit of re a realism to the game because yeah, in real life these aren't smart torpedoes that have IFF, you know, encoded into them or anything like that. Like, it, it's an explosive on a propeller. It's going to blow up whatever it touches, unless they're American torpedoes. Thank you, Department of Ordnance. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm guilty of this. I, I've unfortunately nuked a couple of friendly ships beforehand because, yeah, you don't think the player is going to cut across your torpedoes, but you know they're busy playing their own version of the game, trying not to get blasted, and they might maneuver right into them. Yeah, and besides, of course, just being kind of a uh, an IQ check, of course, too, people could be toxic, and they could just not care about the penalties to themselves and if they just really wanted to be a, a toxic player they could just shoot you or torpedo you and send you back to port and in my opinion overall it's a good change World Warships is the game where you can't just respawn and go for it again so it's not like you're playing like um hardcore Call of Duty uh Mod what, what even are they on now Modern Warfare 2 I think it's the most recent one or whatever, where, you know, if you get friendly fire, you just respawn and go at it again. This is a game where you have to earn credits to offset your cost of entering battle. So if someone wants to be a, a toxic guy and just blast you and send you back to port, there, there's, of course, nothing you can do about that. Uh, you know, yes, there was a system where once they did so much damage, it would be reflected back at them. But, of course, too, that would also be a toxic way they could just, you know, shoot you a couple times, get you down to ha half health, and then kill themselves, and then they go back to port, and, well, that... Now you're down a ship, and now half of your HP is gone. If you're in a sh ship like a mid-tier cruiser that doesn't have a heal, or a DD that doesn't have a heal, you're just kind of boned now. So, yep, I think it's a solid change overall. And, again, keep in mind, this was a part of the game for a very long time. They removed it in 2021 because they were weighing if they wanted to uh, re-release the, what was it, the Kitakami? The, um, the, used to be a tier 4 uh, DD had, like, 20 something torps on it then they moved up to tier 10 they were trying to you know see if they could release it again but then they didn't because no one needs that type of power according to war gaming and that brings us to our main topic the cv rework so many so many comments i saw yesterday said that cvs are now so much more op in today's world of warships than they were back in the day I just want to know, what game were you playing? Like, honestly, th th did you come in at the end of RTS CVs? Or were you there the entire time? And I don't know what type of CV players you had, but, whew, man, I, I that's a hard disagree for me. Like, CVs have their problems today, don't get me wrong, and we're going to talk about them. But man, RTS CVs were like the hand of God. So if you don't know anything about RTS CVs, I, I, I don't have any footage of them because um, I'd never played them that much at all back in the day. So I don't have any footage on my channel. And I don't want to go yoink somebody else's footage. So uh, you just pull up another window and you know search into uh, YouTube, you know, RTS World of Worship CVs, and you should see some clips of them. But yeah, it used to be an RTS style where the CV player had a top-down view of the game, and they would well, manage their planes like an RTS CV. Now, the planes were limited. You had a set amount of planes, and once those were shot down, you're done. So there's that. Also, back in the day in RTS CVs, when you would set fire to the CVs, they couldn't launch planes. Makes sense. That's not a thing anymore. And CVs back in the day were super rare. No one had AA builds because why? You might get a CV game every one or two out of ten games. And right now, you guys are probably going, oh my god, that sounds great. If you're a newer player and you haven't had to experience this. But hold on. Let's talk about what was crazy about them. First off, they could launch and control all of their squadrons. All of the squadrons, all right? And that could be, I think, up to four or five squadrons, depending upon the CV. 
So you could have like, and this is the thing too, there was different loads out, loadouts for the CVs back in the day. You had air supremacy loadouts where you had three set of fighters. Uh, and it wasn't the consumable, by the way, not the consumable where you hit T and the fighter comes and goes for two minutes and then pisses off. No, they were there. They didn't have a gas tank. The, the planes were powered by like a nuclear reactor or something. They could just chill the entire match. So you had air supremacy loadouts where you could have three fighters and just deny the enemy CV the right to exist. Um, then you also had, you know, ships that would have like three torpedo squadrons or, you know, two bomber squadrons and a torpedo squadron and, you know, a fighter thrown in there as well. It's just dependent upon, you know, what, what CV it was and what loadout you ran. You could control this all at once and the planes again they didn't have a gas tank on them they could just chill and do whatever they wanted to do until they dropped their payload then they would have to go back to the ship and rearm and the fighters had an ammunition count so once they ran out of ammo so you know bullets in their in their uh, guns they would also have to go back to the ship to rearm other than that they could chill out there for as long as they wanted to and this is something that really got me i saw quite a few comments saying that cvs can just perma spot nowadays um if you consider what CVs do today, perma spotting, boy, man, I don't know what you would call what CVs could do back in the day. Because with that fighter squadron, if they just didn't care about trying to shoot down the enemy CVs planes, they could literally just go drop that somewhere in the map, like in the corner, just within everyone's air detect range from the uh, from the uh, enemy side of things, and they would just sit there. Again, th there's no timer. It's not like the symbol today where you had to fly there with a, let's say, a torpedo squadron, and then hit T, and then, you know, the plane would come in, the fighter planes come in, and they spin around for two minutes, and then they leave. No, they would just sit there the entire time and spot. They would legitimately permanently spot you the entire match and unless your cv went over there and dealt with them yeah what are you gonna do you, you couldn't do anything about it so cvs today they can what's called perma spotting they can fly over you and it, yeah if you're like a dd out there and they just want you dead they can you know, take their torpedo planes, just fly over you and just sit on top of you. And they technically can perma spot you. But while they're doing that, they're not doing any damage because they control that individual squadron. Back then, you could just tell your fighters to go to that corner of the map and just stay within everyone's air detect range, you know, maybe move them up every, every now and then. And you still have three more squadrons to just fly around with and just dump on people with. And keep in mind, too. You could sick all of your squadrons on one poor ship at the same time. If you got two torpedo squadrons and a dive bomber squadron, you could cross drop that poor man back to the port in like like it was nothing. You'd have one set of torpedoes come on one side, other set come on the other side. You can have the dive bombers just you know take a dump on them all at the same time. There's clips of RTS CVs just you know dumpstering tier eight and above uh, battleships back to port. And you couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that is straight up worse, in my opinion. Also, too, uh, since the gameplay was so radically different from the, the core game, not a lot of players actually played CVs. So while they were rare, if you got a CV, there's like an 8 out of 10 chance that, he's a god in that cv and that he can just literally win the match by himself like that's how powerful cvs were back in the day they could quite literally single-handedly win a match very easily if they were a good cv player so in my opinion the rework did make them a lot more balanced now are they perfectly balanced no there's still issues today like i've said and yes if you got on this game Post 8.0, when the CV rework dropped, that was a hot mess. There was no excuse from that from Wargaming's side. They rushed the rework, they pushed it out. It was a mess. We were all beta testers for, I think, like two patch cycles, two full patch cycles. CVs went through just a roller coaster of being ungodly overpowered to being a little more than an annoyance between the, the hot fixes. And yeah, I can completely understand if you got on during that time period, you got a taste of those CVs, of that post rework CVs. Understandably, I can see how you think they were incredibly busted because there were several points during that time that they, that they were. Now, today's CVs, like I said, they're much more balanced. 
You can only control one squadron at a time. You can't just dumpster a single ship with overwhelming force. And like I said, if you want to perma spot a ship, you can do that, but you can't do damage. Uh, most CVs use fighters to spot, which is limited in both duration and charges. Like I say, they fly around for two minutes. You get, I think, like two or three charges of the spotter uh, of the. Well, it's my it'll be a spot of the way some CVs use, CVs use it of of the fighter, and then once you're out, you're out. But the CV rework did set out to do something that we're getting set up to do is in that it made the CVs a lot more popular. It's not uncommon now to where you went from having CVs every like 1 out of 10 games to having them every 6 or 7 out of 10 games now at tier 10 or tier 8 or any of the, the higher tier CVs. And keep in mind, there's less of them in this game. There used to be full lines of CVs like from tier tier 4 to tier 10. There's tier 4, tier 5, tier 6, tier 7, tier 8, tier 9, tier 10 CVs. But now there's only even tier CVs. So despite there being... You know, physically let well, physically, legitimately less CVs in game for players to play. They're still much more popular because the rework blends them into the uh, core gameplay a lot better than beforehand when they were an RTS style of CV. So now, of course, there's a couple of things that make today's game miserable for players. Uh, submarines, obviously, if you don't like submarines, they are out now, and they weren't out back then, so it's pretty easy to go back, yeah, look, to go and take a look back and say, yeah, submarines weren't a thing back then, so back, so, you know, back in the day was better. You could very much say that. And super ships weren't a thing back in the day, so you could, again, very easily look at pre-super ships game and say, oh yeah, the game was way better when super ships weren't a thing. Yeah, I can, I can see that, I can see that, but... They have legitimately worked pretty hard to fix what were big issues back in the day. self firing was removed. Friendly firing was removed. Uh, the CV rework happened, which, I mean, it, it did what they wanted to do, which was make the CVs a much more commonly played class. And if you are a game developer and you want people to play the classes in your game, um, seeing a class that was barely being played by, I, I think the percentage was like 3%. If that, or, I mean, God, I can't remember the numbers. It, it was a while ago, but it, it wasn't a large portion of the player base because of how radically different the CV gameplay was. I mean, they did fix that problem. If you saw that as a problem, of course. If you just don't like CVs, then, well, I mean, you just don't like CVs, of course. So, I just want to take a look back at the game and look at the issues that were present back then versus now. I mean... The game's problems today can be fixed pretty easily, in my opinion. Submarines, if you accept the fact that they're here to stay, and they're going to stay here, because, I mean, they are. I mean, it, it would be nice if they would just be removed, but Wargaming is not going to do that. They, they've dumped way too much time and money into, into them. And they aren't really played that much. I mean, it, they, they, they really aren't. If you look at, like, you know, how many ships are being played in-game. Now, granted, Tier 6, that's a different story. But from, like, Tier 8 up, you maybe have one sub per side every two or three games, if that. But they're very close. If, if you would balance their speed when they're at periscope depth, where they can't be rocking and rolling at pretty much their top speed, and if they would do something about the ability for them to just ping away incessantly... I think you would have a pretty balanced class there, um, but they haven't done that yet. Super ships, I'm starting to see less and less of them in the game because Wargaming has done a very good job of just trying to get people to spend more and more credits on the game through all the events, the auctions, and through the super ships that they're starting to become more and more rare. Um, I still don't think they should be in the tech tree, if you're going to put them in the tech tree, you might as well, you know, go ahead and develop tier 12 and 13 while you're at it. So there's a proper bracket for these super ships. I mean, War Thunder's doing it. They've gone above 10.0 quite some time ago. So, yeah. But again, this is all my two cents. I'm not saying that definitively today's World Warships is better than World Warships of old. I'm giving you guys my two cents. So let's do the same thing that we did yesterday. And let me know in the comments down below. What's your two cents? 
was the game really that much better back in the day or was it flawed and it had its own issues and they eventually got addressed and now the game just evolved to the point to where it has its new issues and potentially in the future like with these older issues they get addressed and they get fixed and then you know a few years later down the road more issues crop up like a live service game typically sees or do you think that the olden days were just the peak of wood warships and we're just in the decline again let me know what you guys think in the comments down below it was an interesting conversation yesterday so let's continue that today hope you guys enjoyed and if you did make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel we're way to 50,000 subscribers and i can't thank you guys enough for that we guys have a wonderful wednesday and a wonderful rest of your week i hope to catch you guys in the next one